legend and founder and president of Moto America Road Racing, Wayne Rainey. Wayne, good hi, to be hi, here. Rob. Good yeah. to see you again. Nice yeah. to see you again. I Thanks. see you every year here, don't I? Yeah, I can't keep us away, man. We love we love racing. So, um, but uh, appreciate you taking some time out. We're here at the final round. This is the penultimate round. It is the uh, Barber Round in um, Barber Motorsports Park here in Leeds, um, Alabama, right outside of Birmingham. And uh, this has been. One heck of, is this the fifth season? This concludes the fifth season as Moto America, am I correct? That's correct. It's, uh, this is our fifth season. Uh, this is normally where we do the last race at Barber. Uh, this year, uh, the, the track is resurfaced. Yeah, I noticed so that. It's a new surface for all the racers, so there has been a lot of uh, uh, what they thought they knew, what they were coming into from racing five years before. It's all changed now, this new surface. Reference points are different. Uh, the grip's different. There's no more bumps. It's as smooth as a billiard table, and uh, the riders are uh, they're getting caught out. So you know the track's green. What that means is not a lot of rubber down. So it's slippery, and a lot of the racers uh, where they're getting caught out is not throttle on. It's actually throttle off. So when they shut the throttle off, the bike unloads and it just steps out. And, and boy, there's been uh, there's been a lot of uh, get offs, but. Uh, yeah, I've been watching them on the media you guys have been putting up the last few a couple of days as they've been practicing and everything. There's been some serious offs. Yeah, they all, everybody's, uh, they look real serious, but you know, this track's real safe. And uh, so you can race hard here and if you do make a mistake, you know, the, the track's got the proper amount of runoff and uh, we have air fence, so it's real safe if they do make a mistake. Yeah, it's a great, this is a great track, great facility. And uh, so this has been, one crazy exciting season. It's been amazing for us to watch. Of course, now with with Road Dirt, we've had we uh, I covered the Atlanta round. We had a guy up covering uh, Road America, and um, and then two guys down there at Laguna Seca that Paul had worked out for us. And of course, we're here again at the end of the season. We just Road Dirt loves racing. We can't help it. But um, so we love yeah. what Moto America does. What when you look back over the season? I know we still got today and tomorrow because we're recording this actually Saturday morning. What have been some of the real highlights for you when you look back over the season? It's been a fantastic season. What are some highlights you think that just really stand out for you? Yeah, Rob. I think uh, the I think the number one highlight for Moto America, the, what we have done that has been number one is our TV for, uh, package. You know, we brought all of our TV in-house. We were on BN Network last year. Some things changed, so we had kind of forced our hand. We had to make the investment in to do our own TV production. We started our Live Plus uh, video page. Yeah, I mean, this is really cool. We've got Fox 2 Live Superbike Racing uh, on Fox 2. Uh, we've got a, a Moto America Rewind Show on NBC uh, Sports Network. So it's, uh, it's just been great. So, our TV production has just been our number one program that we've done this year. That has really opened up a lot of opportunities for us. You know, it, it started a little bit late, so you know we would have liked to have been able to announce it sooner to help the teams with sponsorship. But now, a year going forward, everybody knows what you know what's possible. But and uh, you know, I think up until last year, we had to get the class structure right. And, uh, Five classes. Yeah, five classes. Super bike, super sport, twins, junior, and super stock. Right? That's right. And so three of the championships are coming down here for the last race. That's right. Which That's is right. what the series right. wants and the fans want to see that. So, and you know, these racers, they're racing really hard. There's been a lot of controversy about uh, some of the racers maybe racing harder than what's, uh, what's expected, but I look at it as going, you know what, they want that Moto America Championship. It's competition. Say, let them race. Yeah. yeah, let them race, that's for sure. And it has been just an amazing season for us to watch. Even the rounds we haven't been able to make, we've been tracking them and trying to ride on. It's just been, it's been an insane season. I, I love it. Um, speaking of, of uh, just the riders, um, there's an enthusiasm and a passion in the paddock, you know, from start to finish. Um, who are some of the breakout riders that really have just kind of jumped out this season? 
I think initially you got to look at the Junior Cup Rock for Landers. Oh, yeah. You know, this kid uh, showed up at Atlanta. Yeah. Nobody knew him. We, uh -huh. we had no idea what was going to happen in that class. And this kid, it looked he was wearing leathers. It looked like he had slept in and also played in the playground. You know? I mean, they were... <laughs> well, it's they, not they much older than that. It's like 14. Yeah. It's I crazy. just turned 14. Yeah. And he went to the first race and won it by 15 seconds, which was a record for uh, the amount of space that he won uh, in that class. Yeah. And his name was Rocco Landers. I mean, what, that, that's a racer's name. If it I is. Heard one. So yeah. uh, he's been, for me, uh, the, the breakout racer, most, you know, one of the most outstanding because he came here and in Moto America, we're always looking for new talent. Oh, yeah. We want to develop the talent that we have. And uh, the talent that we got, we want to keep, but we also want to make them to where the series is competitive in every class. So if they do get a chance to go race abroad, that uh, they have a chance to go and race for the world championship. So that's one of the kids. He's got his sights set on MotoGP. And being 14, and uh, I think he won, I don't know, I, we had 20 races, I think, with those guys. And I think he's won just about uh, just about so like 17 yeah. or 18 yeah he just killed yeah. it this season he's a phenomenal job and he's yeah, a nice set of leathers you know, about halfway through so well, it's about he looks, time. i think he earned it yeah i would, I would say that i would say he definitely earned it um what are some elements that you guys have incorporated into the into the moto america season this year that you think have really even over last year when we covered it last year some some of the elements that have really paid off for them. Besides television, I know we talked about the television, which has been great. It's good you guys have it in-house. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we've had a consistent rules package for the classes that we have. And so the teams that are here, they can they can invest into the series by uh, when there's no rules changes, everybody they kind of know what's going forward. So we have seen our twins class. When we announced that class last year at Atlanta, yeah. I think we had seven entries. That's right. It was, yeah. yeah, and I looked at my partners and I thought, well, did we do the right thing here? And so the last, excuse me, the last race, we had over 40 entries. Here, this year, we've had almost 40 entries at, at just about every race. Yeah. It's, it's a full class. It's been fun to, uh, to watch. I think um, the 600 class has really been one of the most fascinating Intense championships we've had all year oh, man, yeah. with uh, Sean Dillon Kelly and Hayden Gillum and then PJ Jacobson coming back from the world championship. So we weren't really sure where the level was of our 600 riders until he came, and immediately they were on pace. And so, as a series, you always want to be thinking you're doing the right thing, you know, and that proved that when we were racing at the same level as PJ. Uh, actually, it looks like PJ's even looked at his game a little bit this year because he's him. looking really strong now. Yeah, I've seen how Bobby Bobby Fong has pushed him in races and Bobby, him yeah, yeah, Bobby Fong. You know, so Bobby Fong. They've been all he, really good for each other. Yeah, so Bobby Fong. I think you know this time at the end of last year he didn't he didn't have a ride. He got a job at UPS, and I think he was delivering packages when he got the call from him for uh, John Ulrich's team. But Bobby, I think that that whole uh, going back to work and not being a part of the racing um, really did something to him when he got the opportunity because Bobby this year has been incredible. And, gave him a hunger. Yeah, he's gave him a hunger and then even when he makes mistakes and uh, you know he's whacked himself a couple times, but he's manned it up, gotten back on that bike and he wants that championship. And coming into this event, he's got a 10 point lead so it's his to lose. That's true, that's true. It's great, uh, speaking of PJ, it's great seeing him and Jake Gagne come back to the championship, come back from after racing in World Superbike overseas. So it's not only you guys are grooming, you know, potential world-class racers on the pump, but some of these world-class racers want to come back home and race here, so. Yeah, you know, every year we have, uh, in the off season, we have riders from MotoGP, World Superbike, from other national championships throughout the world. But there's something about racing in America that is, you know, I think it's our great country. It's our great racetracks that we have. There's a lot of famous racetracks here. You know, when we started Moto America five years ago, the series was, well, there wasn't a lot of teams left. There wasn't a lot of riders. There was not many sponsors. So now five, we started with 72 riders at our first event. This race here, we have 140. 140, 140 wow. riders. So we doubled it, yeah. and it's uh, it's been it's a full uh, it's pack. Been, yeah, it's it's so that's been very. Uh, uh, that's a big commitment to try to build this sport. 
you know, I'm just paying it forward. You know, I'm just the sport that's given me everything that I have. You know, I cared about what uh, what was going on here. So, you know, with my partners, we were able to uh, to make the investment and make the commitment and do the work that it could to make the, the championship viable and and have value and, and be competitive. So. You know, it's uh, it's you know, we're at year five, and uh, we're hoping now that we see some riders actually from our series, from what we've done, go abroad. Yeah, I hope so too. They're definitely getting ready for it here. Um, looking ahead into 2020, I know you guys are already thinking ahead. Um, what can uh, what can fans, what can race, what can race fans expect? What what's what, what's coming in 2020? I think our TV package is going to stay the same. We'll good. still have our Fox and ABC yeah. Sports Network. But, you know, I think our our video pass is going to grow more as it gets really popular. And, it's, and more people, when they when they understand that that's available, you can see all the practices, all the races, both days. So you really get to see a lot of the stuff, behind the scenes stuff that you don't get to see, like maybe on Fox with a one hour show. Right. Um, all the classes are going to stay the same. There's not going to be no rules changes. Next year, though, we're introducing two new racing circuits, so we're going. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we're going back to the northwest uh -huh. uh, uh, to a track called the Ridge. That's a band. Yeah, I know. There's somebody queuing up out there. One of the bands for the opening ceremonies. Yeah, so we're going back to the Ridge, and then we're also going back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, that's which exciting. is uh, which has been very, very popular. A lot of comments from our fans. So those are the two big things uh, that we're going to be doing next year. The other thing is we really want to build that superbike class up. We want to build the base. We want to have. We need about five more riders in that class, and so we have some good ideas to try to make that happen. That's cool. Well, I'm excited about Indy. I'm going to try to get up for Indy next year, and I've got a guy that lives out. Uh, the Ridge is his is his home track. I mean, he lives like 30 minutes from there. So when I I sent him a copy of the schedule, he was all excited. He said, "I'm clearing my calendar, everything." He said, "That's my race weekend." So he's going to cover that for us. Awesome. Yeah. First time. That's, that's the first time ever at the Ridge, right? Yeah, yeah. So I raced at a track called Kent, Washington, back in uh, in the mid '80s. Yeah. So a uh, long, long time ago. It's been a long time since we've been out of that part of the woods. Pacific Northwest. That's a, that's excellent. What do you foresee? I don't know. We talked about this before, but you know, road, American road racing really took a hit in the 2000s, and, and it's making a comeback now with Moto America. Thankfully, uh, what do you foresee as the future of American road racing? Do you think we'll have? You think we'll have the glory days of the 70s and 80s and early 90s again, back in your era, or think? It, well, you know, I mean, I'm hopeful. I think Moto America can make it happen. Yeah, you know, I think there's been, I think the racing itself, uh, if you watch and follow our series, every single race is, is except for Rocco, is one very, very close. It's always a big battle in every class, and it's usually won by tens of seconds, and not, you know, bar to bar going across the line. So the racing, we don't have a problem with the racing. It's great racing. You know, I think the industry has taken a hit as a whole. Yep. Motorcycling, um, I think, you know, when people figure out that, uh, you know, they got to get away from their phones and they got to get back outside and they got to challenge themselves by, you know, uh, putting your helmet on and going out and, you know, when you got your helmet on, you can focus on yourself. There's no distractions. You can actually have fun riding motorcycles. And I think, you know, in our culture as a whole has gotten away from the outdoors in a way that we used to always enjoy. There's oh, yeah, a lot. the way we grew up. Yeah, we grew up in the woods, man. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of distractions now. There's a, you know, this instant gratification by you know things that you can do on your phone. And uh, but I think, you know, what we're trying to do is uh, is make the racing series available to more people so they can see it, so they can come to the events. You can smell it, taste it, uh, touch it watch it and see that you can have a good time coming back camping at a Moto America race. So, you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen in the mini moto classes uh, for young kids to actually have opportunities to race at their local go-kart track. And we're seeing now a lot of racing series starting to develop for these young classes, like the Old Valley series, this uh, little young uh, little Moto America mini bike class. And there's, yeah, we're seeing that in yeah. Atlanta. We're seeing a class in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, and, and, category. and uh, we just raced in Pittsburgh uh, a few races ago. We had one of the uh, Old Valley Cups there, and there was like there was kids like five years old racing. And when I saw them go around the track, I thought they are going way too fast. So I think it's already started, and I think it just needs to be more focus on 
what's available, where it's at, getting the word out. And uh, that's the thing, you know, we need the industry to help us. You know, Yamaha and Suzuki have been here. They've been with us for five years. They've been promoting, they've had their teams. We need the other manufacturers to also, this is their series, this is America. Yeah. They should be here, they should be, you know, uh, pushing Manufacturers. Them That's right. <laughs> Listen in. Help them teams out, there's teams out here. There's, you know, a lot of privateer teams mm -hmm. and everybody has the investment. But this is the manufacturers, this is their championship. Yeah, it is. But, uh, well, I appreciate you taking a few minutes of your time with me, Wayne. It's always good to see, always good to be at the races and, uh, we love Moto America. We love what you guys are doing, and we're going to keep covering, man. So, right. well, this is Rob Brooks with Wayne. Yeah, Rob Brooks and Wayne Rainey signing out. Road Dirt, over and out. Thank you.